Now, over a 72 hour time frame, you add one new component at a time. I will give you this, as you've heard me say before, I love a good turkey neck. Necks are key. Because they do what? They assist in the bulking of Guys, if you're feeding dog food, I get that question, what is the best dog food? I couldn't tell you, no dog food. But if I had to feed dog food, well, I don't have to feed dog food. Guys, T-Fit here with FitBully TV. One of the things you wanna do is for one, there are no studies that talk about what happens when you open dog food, but it is not uncommon for the food to become rancid. Your best bet is that, hey, it's dog food, it's packaged up, it's got a pretty bag, the dog's gonna be healthy, the food's gonna last, it's never gonna get old. All things come to an end, and all things die. And you don't want to get your dog food, no, no, your dog, no dog food, and your po dog roll out. <laughs> Check out of here. So, I put together a transition guide because people have asked me, hey, how do I transition my dog to dog food? I'm going to give away a few things, but all the things in detail, and we will continue to update the class in detail, are going to be on our Pet Achievers website. So, let me take a deep breath because we literally just got done shooting this whole double situation. One of the hardest parts of transitioning your dog to dog food is managing the poop. And from a pet parent standpoint, it's not being scared when you see something black, green, blue, or just runny come out of your dog's butt. That's frightening. Now, where are some places that you can get some raw food and it feel complete? Some people hate Walmart, some people love Walmart. I've got no quarrel with the Mart of Wall. They're winners, they're a big distribution channel. They've got all the stuff you need to a degree, or your dog would need. And our dogs, they use it at times, and I'm like, ah, let me test everything. So far, so good. Now, over a 72 hour time frame, you add one new component at a time. I will give you this, as you've heard me say before, I love a good turkey neck. Necks are key because they do what? They assist in the bulking of stool. Bone keeps the stool bulked. Once the stool becomes runny or, or not so congealed, it becomes scary for people like me and you. And if the dog's dealing with gastrointestinal inflammation, then it's constantly doo-dooing everywhere. Also scary. So, turkey necks. One of my favorite things and ways to start the transitioning, plus it has a lot of huge benefits. You've got your calcium, you've got the cartilage, you've got so much in there that benefits your dog long term. And you can't tell me, we've done the videos, that this has enough calcium in it alone. I think, matter of fact, I think it has 1.4%. Let's see, calcium minimum is 1.4%. Do you guys know how to calculate how much calcium that is? What's a thousand times 1.4? <laughs> it's like 1%. You want me to show you how much calcium a dog needs per day? I would encourage you to go look it up. Look at that number and say, so if my dog ate four cups of dog food, three cups of dog food, two cups of dog food, because I don't even know if it says this is, this is not even based off a of serving size. Now let's see. Calories based on an eight ounce cup. Cups. Oh, there we go. So for every eight ounces of food, which is one cup of food, literally, it's 1.4, 1.4% uh, of calcium your dog needs. If you're looking up right now how much calcium your dog needs a day, you know that ain't enough. It ain't even close. At any hoop, you want to know how to transition your dog to raw food. Three things I would focus on. Meats that have low percentages of fats. Definitely proteins are my bad bones. Bones, bones, bones that don't have a lot of fat on them. Some people give the chicken legs thinking that, hey, that's got a lot more bone. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I love feet. Huh. Not, not, no, not feet like that, though, y'all. Not not I'm not a feet fan. When nobody's feet crusty, dusty, rusty feet touching me. <laughs> but... Turkey necks, feet, 
are some of my favorite things to transition. When you're thinking about adding extra fat to your dog's food, be careful with that as well. So even with the sardines you see me use many times, I like to start with water if I was gonna use water. And then of course, the most scariest part about transitioning the dog, in my opinion, is using various organs. It's not scary for us, but the organs can take over if you don't know percentages of needs, and even more importantly, just basic things to follow so that you can really manage that, that, that that's gonna happen. And then how to work the dog food out and time frames. Over 72 hours, add something new. Use meats low in fat, then add in more fat as far as fattier meats as it keeps going. And most importantly, go get our guide on petachievers.com. It's a class. I will update the class. I will keep I will answer questions on the class because we'll be a chance we'll get a chance to see the comments. A lot of the things that you need from a fiber standpoint can be bought in cans. And we'll talk some more. Take care of your dogs.